Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to do a upgrade from my old Ryzen 1700X to the new Ryzen 5 3600, and this is all going to be done on the older ASUS Prime X370 Pro. So, I'm going through the whole process of finding the software, upgrading the hardware, and then doing some benchmarks at the end. So, keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be doing a simple CPU upgrade, or at least what should be simple. So we're gonna video the process and look out for any pitfalls and give information and guidance on how possibly you could do it better if anything goes wrong. Some of the things we're gonna need, obviously, a working system with the original CPU is gonna be beneficial to get things up and running, to download the new BIOS files and all those kinds of things. But again, we'll go through that in more detail when it comes to it. But other than that, other than uh, a screwdriver, some patience, and maybe some thermal compound, Pretty much a USB stick is the only other thing you're going to need. So let's get the PC up on the test bench and we'll start the process. Okay, so we've swapped the PC round and uh, we've got it behind us, as you can see. Um, we've got our USB stick ready so we can download the new BIOS. So what we're doing is we're taking out our old Ryzen 7 1700X and replacing it with the Ryzen 5 3600 on this motherboard, the Prime X370 Pro. So what we need to do is to find out which revision of the BIOS we're actually on at the moment which revision BIOS we actually need for the new CPU to flash the BIOS and then install the CPU and then see if there's any uh, real world difference. So here we go. So let's stick the USB drive in first of all. So, so we've got our USB drive ready. And first thing we need to do is check which BIOS revision we're in. So we we'll use CPU Z for that, which I would uh, thoroughly recommend you do. And we don't want to do an update quite yet. So in our tabs here, if we look at our mainboard tab, and it tells us here we're on version 4012, and that was dated 14th for the 6th 2018. So it's quite an old BIOS anyway, so we could do about updating it. So that's the version we need to have, or at least to be on, and see what we're on with the GPU, or CPU rather. So let's go to the motherboard's web page. So it's a uh, ASUS X370 Prime. And that's the board we've got there. So if we look in the support section and go down to CPU and memory support, and then we scroll down for this list, we can see which BIOS revision we need. So we're looking for a Ryzen 5 3600, which is this one here. So this one needs BIOS version 4801. So we haven't got that on our board, so we are definitely gonna have to do a BIOS update. So if we go back up to the top here and go to drivers and tools, and then we can go and choose our Windows operating system, which it doesn't really make much difference on the BIOS and firmware. And just click on that tab. So that is the latest version there, 5220, which is dated 24th of the 9th, 2019. So we'll go ahead now and download that. And what has it got? So that's the ABBA version of the uh, AGESA. It's a little bit over what we actually need, but we might as well go for the latest one. So we'll click on download and we'll save it to our USB drive. So that's currently downloading. And I think that's pretty much finished. So show the folder. And there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extract the file. Again, I've done this before, but you don't need to do it. There's no reason why you should really. Sometimes you'll find some information on the update actually inside the folder, which uh, may be interesting to read, but no, we've got no readme file, just a cap file. So we're all done there. So we can close down all our windows and we can go ahead now and flash our BIOS. So what we're gonna do now is shut down the computer. So click on restart, and when we're restarting, you wanna be pressing the button to access your UEFI or BIOS, in which case on this board, it's gonna be the delete key. So let's click on restart, and we'll go ahead and do that. As it says on the screen, press delete or F2. And there we go. So what we want to do now is we want to look into how to flash our BIOS. So what we're going to need to do is go into the advanced mode and in tool and easy flash three utility. So I'll ask you here how you want to do the update. You can actually do it over the internet if you wanted to, um, or you can do it via storage devices. So I'm going to choose storage devices and hit next. And we have to choose our drive now. Choose that one there. 
and then we've got our directory there and there's our cap file so easy flash is recognize this and says do you want to read this file so we'll read it first of all and this sometimes takes a little while and I've clicked on it again so now it's processing it to start a flash Again, this is one of those things that takes a little while, so this is one of those things where you can walk away. I would have thought, yep, yeah, the mouse is actually disabled at the moment, so that's going to take its time. It won't let you do anything to the keyboard or mouse, because it has to do its thing and not be interrupted. Obviously, at this point, do not turn off the power. If you have got a UPS device available, then now is definitely a good time to have it plugged in and be in use. But uh, we'll go off and do something else for a little while, and we'll come back to this when it's finished processing. Now at this point the process has finished and it's now doing a reset and as you can see on the screen possibly if you can still see it if not I'll put it up it says about the boss is updating so at this point don't take out your old processor leave it in there let it go through a couple of boot cycles to make sure that everything is a-ok -okay and that the uh, flash has taken hold the last thing you want is a problem now and obviously if you put in a CPU which potentially could have a fault with it however unlikely um, if you unplugged it at this point, it still is a problem. So don't do that, whatever you do. Let it go through its process, let it reboot, all that kind of stuff, and uh, let it do what it needs to do. So in a moment now, we're back up. So let's get back into the computer and we'll have a look and see what's going on. So we've done our flash now, and as we can see on the screen, it's got the uh, Asus Prime X370 Pro ACPI, ACPI BIOS revision 5222, 5220, and it's listed our processor in there. So uh, we have to press F1 to run setup, and we'll go into the BIOS now and see what's going on. We don't really need to make any changes, so we can pretty much leave that as it is. Yeah, we're all pretty good. Now, actually, it's interesting to note at the moment, even with the uh, Arctic Cooling Freezer 34 in there, we've still got a relatively high CPU temperature of 46 degrees on this uh, slightly old uh, processor now. The BIOS temperatures generally tend to be a little bit higher, and our CPU voltage is uh, pretty much off the chart there, so... We'll be looking at that in a minute. Okay, so as things stand at the moment, it's all okay. So I'm gonna do one final reboot. So we'll save and exit. And we'll just make sure that we can actually get back into Windows. Okay, so we've managed to successfully flash the BIOS. Everything's looking good and we've got back into Windows. So now we can turn the PC off and put in our new CPU. Okay, so that is the processor swapped out now. So we've done the BIOS update. We've swapped the processor out, which is a pretty simple process. If you want to see how to change a CPU, click on the link up here and see the video in full there. Uh, but now all we need to do is turn the PC back on and make sure that everything's okay, check the BIOS and uh, see how it runs. <laughs> that was worrying. It's always a, a worry when that happens. So it says now new CPU installed. So that's great. So we'll... Uh, We'll check now in the BIOS, and also we can do some things like tweak the memory a little bit. And now we can see we've got our Ryzen 5 3600 6-core CPU, uh, CPU temperature 41 degrees, so yeah, not much different from the previous one actually. Um, and actually what we could do now is we can enable the DCPOP on our RAM, which actually previously didn't particularly like being clocked that high for some reason, so... We'll give that a go. Um, I think we'll leave pretty much everything else as is and we'll leave it as stock settings. So let's do a save and exit. And here we go again. So wait for everything to load up. And let's have a look at uh, CPU Z. And yep, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 5 3600 6 core CPU and core speed you can see there bumping around. Nice, happy days. And our SPD settings, yeah, we've got RAM set up. That's all looking good. So let's go into uh, Cinebench and give that a quick run. So there is my previous uh, best attempt, 1542. So let's run a quick uh, CPU test. 
Um, I'm expecting this to be very similar, if not the same, because of the two fewer cores, obviously four lesser threads, so things are going to take a little bit longer. But we have got a little bit more in terms of horsepower as in frequency, so it'll be interesting to see what this comes out as. Yeah, that's a little bit further down. Again, not the end of the road, and I'm sure with a little bit of tweaking, we can get that a little bit higher up. Now, I can't actually imagine this being any different from the previous result because this is predominantly on the GPU rather than the CPU. Oh, actually, that's uh, yeah, that's had a, a noticeable bump up actually from the previous system. So there it was with my previous setup, and there it is now with the current setup. So yeah, that's a uh, that's quite a big jump. Okay, so that's enough of that. We'll save the benchmark score. And I suppose the one last thing we could do is we'll try a quick render in Adobe Premiere. Okay, so that took a little while of messing around because I'll change the processor so Adobe thinks it's a new PC. But anyway, so let's uh, export this file. Now this is gonna be my standard output, so I'll change, choose the file name. So we'll choose that one, put it overwrite it. So 1080p, um, pretty much standard stuff, relatively low bit rate. And let's export. It says it's already got one in order. So already, yeah, that looks like it's gonna be quicker actually, because when I started the other render, I'm sure it was in the six minutes range, or, although it is six minutes now. So we'll let this render a minute see how long it takes and uh, come back after. Okay, so we're all done and dusted, done some benchmarks, and at the moment, I've got to be honest with you, some of the things I regularly do, such as video editing, it looks like actually the render time is approximately the same. There's possibly only a few seconds in it, which I guess is only a smallish video, so you're not expecting a lot. I'll try and pop up the results just to my right here so you can see what the two were. But from what I can tell at initial glances, they are very, very similar. The other tests I ran, um, again, some things look really good. Obviously, single core stuff, the the new CPU is gonna absolutely trounce it. Things like CPU Z doing the uh, benchmarks in there, you get a really good result for the single core. The six cores themselves, still not doing too badly. Whether or not it's a, um, a massive, massive win for this processor, I don't know at the moment. Uh, for me personally, as video editing, then the Ryzen 7 700 x is still a fantastic performer and it's still certainly got a lot of life left in it. If I was given the choice now whether to buy one of these secondhand or one of these new for approximately similar sort of prices, which these do tend to go for about £150 or so if you can still get them, they are quite scarce now. So between the two, there's not really a great deal in them. Obviously, you get the modern features in there and to be fair, I am using an older X370 motherboard, which isn't probably getting the best out of the chip. But having said that, it, it seems very fast. It seems quite snappy now, actually. Uh, the system's done a few more reboots since, and it seems to have settled down a little bit. It was a little bit glitchy to start with after the first reboot. I guess it's because of the change in the processor, slight change in architecture, and Windows having a little bit of a fit about it. Ideally, if you are changing the CPU, your best bet is to do a completely fresh install of Windows. So I suppose the thing to come away with in the end is I've got a modern CPU. The user benchmark I run is great and we're all green on there. So the uh, the PC is a nuclear submarine. So that's a good sign. Uh, feel free to run the user benchmark test on your own systems and see what you come up with. See if you get a similar results with different processors. Be interested to see what you've got. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't say that I'm completely over the moon about this upgrade, but it certainly is a step in the right direction and going forward it is going to see more benefits as software is more optimized for the newer cores. So there we go, there has been my upgrade path from the Ryzen 7 1700X to the Ryzen 5 3600 and let me know what you think about it in the comments. In the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.